Hi everyone, welcome to episode 8 of uh, Gem Plays Go. Uh, to start off this time I wanted to take a look at some uh, life and death problems. So this uh, first problem, the one on the screen, uh, comes from the uh, app, the Android app uh, Tumego Pro. I'll include a, a pointer to it, or the name of it, in the description of the video if you want to check it out. Um, this is, uh, it's Black's turn to move here. And you can see these uh, white stones are completely surrounded. So if, uh, if they can't form a second eye, they need two eyes to live. If they can't form a second eye, they're just going to get killed. And uh, it's Black's job to uh, find a way to prevent that. Um, now, the, um, just to give you a few things to think about before I ask you to pause the video, there's a couple ways that White could form an eye here. He could place a stone here at uh, E2 and then here at D1, and that would form a very simple structure with two eyes. He could also extend further out to C2. So he could go E2 and C2, and that would uh, connect and form you know, a larger eye here and a smaller eye here, but that would still be two eyes. And then there's a third way of forming an eye, which is to place a stone here on E3, and then one on uh, D1 and uh, E1. So you have this kind of uh, loop around uh, an eye at uh, E2, and that would also be a, a valid second eye. So those are the, uh, the moves that you're trying to prevent, and it's uh, your turn with black. So... Uh, if you want to uh, pause the video now and think about it, this would be the right time. Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. Let's let's talk about a few things that don't work. If you just try to uh, creep in slowly with this stone here, um, that's that's too slow. Uh, white can block you, and then if you try to uh, block here to keep him from forming that second eye, white can form a second eye that way. So that's uh, one way that doesn't work. The most natural try and maybe the one you tried is to block here, prevent him from forming that bridge. But remember, there's still a second way that an eye can be formed here, and uh, White can go for that with this move, uh, E3. And now if you try to uh, block that, uh, prevent him from completing that shape, he can capture those stones, and uh, however you block here, um, the other move will form an eye. So for example, if you play here on E2, then White will play on E1, and that forms a second eye and vice versa. If you play on um, E2, then white plays at E1, and that forms a second eye. So there's there's an eye there either way. I don't know if I did it the same way both times. Just to show you, there's two different ways of forming an eye, but uh, you can't stop it from happening. So the move, um, this move here on uh, E1 doesn't work. I guess you could try one more thing. You could try blocking over here, but after this capture, then um, there's two ways to form an eye. White can place a stone on C2 or on D1, and either of those will form a second eye, and um, that will, uh, you can't block both of them. Well, actually, you can't even, it's not even legal to play here. I guess that's the real point. This, this one doesn't form a, may not form a true eye. I'm not sure about that. Okay, but let's go back and uh, talk about the right way to stop it. And uh, one clue is that uh, if you notice that this shape, uh, goes through the square D1, and also this shape, when it comes across and extends, goes through the square D1. So that seems to be a, a crucial square, and you can try and clog it up by placing a stone there. Now there's different ways that White can try and uh, make a second eye still. He can go here with the hopes of extending this way, but you block here, and then um, when he tries to uh, capture that stone, then you fill in here. And this structure here with these four stones, that is, this is a false eye here. Uh, black can fill in here on C3 and then capture that group with a stone on D1. So that's not a true eye. So that wins. Um, let's see, what was, the, what was the other idea here? If black tries to come this way, um, this is interesting. You, you can attack that group by filling in here. Yeah, you just, you just win the whole group there. So that doesn't work either. Um, and then from this position, after you place the stone here, uh, White could just try and capture it. But now this slow creeping move, um, E3, is good enough to stop White from, uh, from making an eye. If White tries to block this way, then you can place a stone here on uh, C2, and now this C1 stone is forming part of a false eye. You can capture that stone here and kill any eye, and if White fills in to save that C1 stone, then this whole structure just has one eye, so that kills it. And uh, what else can he try here after you play here? Um, 
you could try going this way, but you just continue to descend down. And we saw that structure before where these four stones are in a group that can be captured that doesn't form a true eye. So that is uh, an example of a life and death problem and how you solve it. Let's go back to the uh, start of the problem right here. Yeah, so it's Black's turn to move right here. That's uh, something to try and uh, visualize, see if you can uh, uh, figure out the answer in your head, even having seen it, can you visualize the moves? And uh, it's also a good problem to set up on a, a board if you have one and try and play around. Um, there was one other example I wanted to show you. And um, this has a, this is a historical example, I guess. There's a, a book called the uh, Zuan Zuan Qi Jing or something like that. That's in Chinese. It was written in 1349. And uh, in Japanese, it's known as the Gengen Gokyo. And it's a collection of uh, Go problems. So uh, it's, uh, it's amazing, you know, so many years ago. But they were, they were playing the same game back then. Anyway, uh, some of the problems, it, it has about 350 problems in it, I think. Uh, some of them are quite famous and have names. Uh, and this problem is the, the first problem on the list. And this has the name Bright Pearl uh, Escaping <laughs> escaping from the Sea. Uh, or Bright Pearl Escapes the Sea, something like that. So the pearl is in the middle, and I guess the black stones around it form the dark sea. And it certainly looks like that stone is going to be captured. Now, I'm not going to show all the variations. I'll just show a couple of examples of how the stone can break out because I thought it was kind of instructive the way the, way the stone escapes. Um, and uh, so it's White's turn to move, uh, which is fortunate. So he goes here trying to break out. And now um, if Black tries to block, which turns out not to be the best move, but this is the line I wanted to show. Black can block here. The White tries to break out on this side. Black blocks. White tries to break out on this side black blocks and it looks like this is about to be completely dead but there is an interesting weakness in all of these stones these stones around the the white uh, pearl there have uh, have got uh, you know they're separated so they can be attacked and here uh, white can start taking advantage of those weaknesses in the uh, black stones by placing the, the stone here and this attacks the uh, stone on h6. So if black uh, fixes that weakness, connects that stone, then white can play up here at uh, j8. And this attacks two stones. It attacks this stone on j7 and this stone on h8. And uh, white, or black, black can't save both of them. So if black connects here, white can just capture this stone and uh, and the white, <laughs> the bright pearl has escaped. So. Uh, that's just one of many variations. Actually, the best move here after the stone goes forward is for black to uh, try and extend like this. Um, and, uh, well, this uh, it's a long sequence, and I, I probably will mess it up anyway, but it's, it's just an interesting uh, historical document. And uh, sometimes studying those, uh, studying those old puzzles will give you some ideas uh, that you might be able to use in a game. Okay, uh, and I'll include a link to that. Uh, that uh, uh, list of problems on uh, Sensei's library, so you can you can go check it out there in the description. So, uh, well, let's see if we can get a game here. Okay, I'm going for another 13 by 13 game. Oh, we got a game. So let's see, comics 19K. So my uh, 19Q, my rating has improved to 19Q. Um, and uh, he goes first, so we're, we're in the same range here. Let's see, I'm going to go diagonally. That stops him from playing uh, <laughs> a diagonal uh, setup. So I, I get this side and he gets that side. Kind of come in here and uh, see how he wants to proceed. So he advances towards my stone. I think I should uh, block that. And he jumps inside. So that's an interesting way to try and steal the corner, I guess. I'm going to try and block and maybe set up some influence along this line. And uh, he can have that corner. So how do I want to do? Um, do I need to do anything here? I think, uh, I think I will just leave that as it is and um, approach this stone. And 
he defends. So let's uh, let's keep going in. Now, what can I do here? Let's make a little shape here. This uh, is called the tiger mouth shape, and it's pretty solid. So it's a way to gain a little bit of space, and it's difficult for black to play in there. And um, Let's block that group and keep him from coming out. So I'm giving him this corner, and I'm just trying to keep him confined to a small space. And I am hoping to have uh, some space here. Maybe that's not working. If I go here, he can capture that stone, so I need to fill in. Yeah, so I, maybe I didn't play that right. Because this stone is now isolated, this one here. He can capture that. And he's going to. Okay, so let's... Uh, Leave that there. Should I block? I should block there. Keep him from coming out. So I'm sacrificing the stone on G2. A bit of an unintentional sacrifice, but there. Okay, so he solidifies that corner. Um, let's... Um, I have this nice wall here. I could I could jump up quite a few spaces and try and claim some some territory over here. And um, let's approach in along the side. I don't want to give him this side here. You know, I may be able to claim this side, but he's, he's gaining a lot of space here. Yeah, this is going to be tricky. If he gets, um, you know, this corner and this corner and this side, and it'll leave me with this kind of narrow corridor here in the middle. This might not be enough space to really justify things. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and finish out this section here. Yeah, I'm attacking his stone, so he, he had to take there. And then come back here and think about this. Let's get in a little closer to his stones. See what he wants to do about this corner. Yeah, so he wants to try and claim all this side. Which he's doing a pretty good job out there, but I'm going to stop him from coming out at least. And I'm going to try and stop him from connecting here if I can. Yes, so he's coming out this way. And um, you know, the thing is, you know, the, the center is just really hard to defend. That's the problem with the, with the go and trying to play for the center and influence like that. It's just really easy for white to attack the center. So let's, um, maybe I should secure a little territory for myself here. Try and, try and grab some space over on this side of the board. I'm giving up so much. He's playing there. Is he going to isolate these stones? Let's see where he's going with that one. I think these stones can still connect over here. I don't want to let him build a large structure in here. So what can I do here? Probably extend this way. And uh, let's Cut these stones off. So how many liberties do I have here? I have one here and one here. Yeah, he is threatening to actually surround and win those stones. Uh, so I'll be careful. If he takes either one of those, I will be able to uh, take the other one, though. Yeah, let's, let's capture this group. And uh, he's threatening uh, this stone. Um, but I don't mind if he wins one little stone over there. I've, I've got a pretty good group here now. And I've connected these stones together. So this is starting to look a little better. Let's fill in here. I don't know. He still might have more space because he has three sides, basically. Which is a lot. Um, okay, so he's filling in there. Let's um, 
and I capture this stone? Probably not. Let's cut them off here and just try and maximize my space over on this side of the board. And let's see, I'll have to seal up some borders over here and maybe place some stones in the middle to keep him from invading. I also might want to cut here to keep him from connecting over here, but I don't know if that's a big deal. Um, I think it's a better idea for me to fill in with a stone or two over here to make it hard, hard for him to invade. Just kind of staking out all of this territory. I do have to be careful around this corner. He might be able to, let's see, one, two, three, three liberties. He might be able to try and round up those stones by playing here. He plays here, I play here. Yeah, so that's why I thought he might, uh, he might try something like that. Let's try and isolate that stone, though. I don't think that can grow into anything significant. Just didn't want to, coming down and connecting up with his stones over here. So he's going to try and make a little shape there, maybe. Keep him cut off. Just can't let him grow too far along the side. If it gets too wide, he can make a shape with some eyes in it, but I, I can think I can just prevent that. So if I block here, he goes there. Block here, he goes there. Block here, he goes there. Block here, he can go there or there. Okay, it's safer to block in this direction. If he tries to cut, I can capture that stone. If he tries to come in here, I can capture that stone. So I don't really know, uh, and I don't have a great idea of how to add up this territory. <laughs> I'm hoping I have a good amount of territory here. <laughs> but it, like I say, it can be tricky sometimes. Okay, so let's stop this from extending too far once again. I think basically he's just going to be left with a shape here that has no eyes. He can, he can make it grow for quite a long time. Hmm, yeah, he's trying to take advantage of the weakness of my stones over here. If he comes in here, though, I capture it. If he goes here, I connect. And I think I'm still okay. So, okay, so I never blocked over here, and so he's trying to invade over here. So, let's see, I should fill in here. Do I have any weaknesses? No, if he moves there, I can take it. If he moves here, I can take it. Let's attack this stone over here. And let's um, let's see if I play here, he can capture that stone. So let's uh, fill in here. And here, so I don't get caught. So I don't think he can capture any of my stones here. He's going to continue to play. I might just pass, but I let's play one or two more moves here. Play here. He's going to capture that stone. Play here. And I'm going to 
play here to make sure those stones are surrounded. And then he passed. Okay, so I'm going to pass too. I think this game is over, except removed stones. So it's going to remove those stones because I can capture them. And um, who won that? I won. Okay, but it's a close game, 54 to 60. And um, if we look at the territory, he had 51 points of territory, and I had 45. So he actually he had six more points of territory. And uh, I won that game because I had more prisoners. This uh, invasion that he launched over here to try and uh, steal back some territory didn't work out. And I also had five and a half points of Comey. So just on the board, I'm only ahead by one point. So close game. Hope you guys uh, like that. Uh, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.